So I've got two Walking Dead videos on this channel, both of them being connected to one another. The first being about Rick and the crazy stuff he was doing in season 5, and the other about Negan quite literally Debo snatching his chain the following season. Heroes. <laughs> I'm out. I don't, you think I'm about to, I'm not watching this! So today, to complete the Holy Trinity, we're gonna go over Shane, cause Rick doesn't become who he is without this man. Now everyone remembers Rick and Shane's final battle, where Shane famously says, I'm a better father than you, Rick. I'm better for lower than you, man. Now how do two childhood best friends who became partners for the same sheriff's department become mortal enemies? You would think that's the perfect duo to survive a zombie apocalypse, but there was one thing that got in their way. Baby mama drama. Yes, even in a zombie apocalypse, baby mama drama still finds a way to ruin people's lives. It all starts in episode one, where Rick and Shane are talking about the women in their life. And you can't tell me after watching this scene, Rick wasn't one argument with Lori away from starting an alpha male podcast with Shane. Swear to God, it's like, come home, house all lit up. And my job is apparently because because my chromosomes happen to be different as I'm. Because my chromosomes oh happen my to be God. different as I'm made up. I ain't gotta walk through that house, turn off every single light this chick left off. Is that right? Yeah, baby. Mm. All right, I'm changing the preaching to you now, boy. <laughs> Difference between men and women. I would never say something that cruel to her. But seriously, you could see in this scene that Shane wanted Lori just by how uncomfortable he was whenever Rick talked about her. The seed of jealousy was always there, it just needed the right environment for it to grow. And what better environment than Rick getting shot and presumed dead in episode 1. But eventually, Rick wakes up from his coma, and I gotta say, this has gotta be the top 5 worst ways to wake up from a coma, cause if I'm Rick, I would've thought I was in a Resident Evil game or something. But he gets out the hospital, and a couple episodes later, reunites with Lori and Carl. And look at Lori and Shane's reactions. Lori looks like she's going through a mix of emotions of, I'm relieved to see that my husband's alive, but also going through, what the fuck, I cheated on my husband after two weeks of him being dead. She really might have got the Guinness World Record for fastest widow to cheat on her husband. Congratulations. Then there's Shane. Now this was at the time where Shane wasn't fully taken over by the baby mamba symbiote. That shit had only creeped up and taken over his arm. So I'm sure he was happy to see Rick alive. But also, there was def a part of him that was like, shit, man, we almost had it. And what makes it worse for Shane is that Lori is very clear with Shane that now that Rick's back, she doesn't want him around her or her son, further accelerating the baby mama virus on Shane. But there was a good thing that came out of his talk with Lori. Ed gets beat the fuck up. Does Shane still get involved if he isn't upset with what Lori just told him? Probably. But he definitely doesn't beat Ed to a pulp like he did. Like, look at this man's face. You can't tell me that something hasn't taken over this man's body and is controlling his actions. And you can tell he felt like he went overboard because he does the patented Shane hair pull back with his hand. Whenever Shane does that, it's just him taking back control from the baby mama symbiote. And I think it's time I introduce the first man to really see Shane's baby mama syndrome, Dale. This man Dale was probably my favorite character in the early seasons. He was always in his General Iroh bag, trying to give people advice and shit. And of course, just like General Iroh, people rarely listen. But yeah, he was good at seeing people for who they were, and the way he would just straight up stare holes into Shane was hilarious. No word said between the two, just a look of disapproval every time Shane was doing some wild stuff. But can you even blame Dale? Cause while Shane and Rick go on a little patrol, he catches Shane aiming down his sights on Rick with his back turned. He doesn't pull the trigger, but Dale saw the whole thing, and he tries to cap his way out of it. I'm gonna start wearing reflective vests out here. While Dale just stares a hole into him. And as bad as almost pulling the trigger on your childhood best friend because you wanted his wife, Shane somehow tops that, and in the season 1 finale, tries to grape Lori. This was really the scene when I realized there was no going back for this man. The baby mama symbiote was in full control now. And in season 2, it's clear he's willing to do anything to protect his imaginary family of Lori and Carl. So when Otis accidentally quick scopes Carl, Shane and Otis are thrown into a max difficulty level mission to get the medical supplies for Carl. And when I mean max difficulty, I'm talking about hordes of zombies, limited ammo, both of them suffering debilitating leg injuries. And to top it all off, the zombies are speed walking. Why are the zombies speed walking? Like look at this zombie. He legit did a hop. I'm telling you, them early walkers before they got all malnourished and shit were really dangerous. But even with all that, they almost survive. But Shane starts to feel the walkers gaining on them, so he sacrifices Otis. Now watching this back, I used to think that Shane selfishly killed Otis. 
so he could survive the horde. No, no, no. It wasn't that. He cared so much about his imaginary stepson that he was willing to sacrifice Otis for him. I'm actually not kidding. That's a big part of the reason he did it. Truly a great stepfather figure. But after this, Shane has to cap his ass off, not only to Rick and the group, but to Otis's wife. And everybody believes it, except you know who, Dale. I think you ought to show some gratitude. I wasn't there. No, man, you weren't. But I was the time that you raised your gun on Rick. I know what kind of man you are. You think that's the kind of man I am? That's right. Well, maybe we ought to just think that through. Say I'm the kind of man who gunned down his own best friend. What you think I do to some guy that I don't even like? When he starts throwing accusations my way, what you think? Yeah, Dale's lucky he got off with just a threat. Because shaved head Shane could care less about what's the morally right thing to do as a man. Now as bad as Dale and Shane's relationship was, Rick and Shane's were about to get a hundred times worse. First, Lori figures out that she's pregnant. This man Shane already thought Carl was his son and he wasn't even his biological father. Now there's a chance that he might actually be having a child with Lori. Yeah, if the baby mama syndrome was already at 100% for Shane, this was like activating some new mystical unseen form. And then to make things worse, Shane and Rick were fighting about basically every issue, whether it be stopping the search for Sophia or letting Randall live. And I'm not gonna lie, something I never understood was why the group let Rick and Shane go on the road trip to drop Randall off. Like an episode before this, Lori was literally talking into Rick's ear like she's Aaron, telling him Shane's dangerous and he thinks the baby's his. And then there's Dale. He knew Shane was crazy and was willing to kill Rick given the chance. I'll just never understand the decision to have two baby daddies go on a long car ride together. But they go on their road trip together to deal with Randall and Rick tries to set things straight with Shane. And you're thinking maybe the talk worked until just as they're about to leave Randall, he mentions that he knows Maggie. And of course, seeing that as a risk, Shane wants to kill him, but Rick doesn't, so they just start brawling. And I say brawling because this was a wild fight. Shane's throwing headbutts, elbows, motorcycles, and eventually throws a big ass wrench at Rick's head. And this right here was when you knew there was really no coming back for Shane, just based off the symbolism of him looking at his reflection in the broken glass. But even with all that, Rick still saves him from the walkers. But now the group is back with the same problem. What are they going to do with Randall? So they hold a meeting to vote on what they want to do. And surprisingly, everybody was down to kill Randall. Except you know who, Dale. He gives his best general eye roll impression and lectures the group about how this is the morally wrong thing to do and that they're better than this, and nobody was moved by this. Oh, hold on. Talking about this like it's already decided. You've been talking all day. Go around circles, you just want to go around circles again? This is a young man's life, and it is worth more than a five minute conversation. Let's come to, we kill someone because we can't decide what else to do with them. And you saved them. This group is broken. And guess what Dale gets for speaking up? He gets killed by the quietest walker of all time. Like seriously, it's the dead of night in a farm and he doesn't hear the walker sneak up on him. Rest in peace, Dale. But back to the baby mama drama. Rick backtracks on killing Randall, so Shane takes matters into his own hands and not only snaps his neck, but creates a fake scenario to lure Rick into a one-on-one -on -one situation where he can kill him. And he does get that exact scenario, but Rick refuses to engage in a standoff, which makes Shane hesitant to kill an unarmed man. And while Rick is handing his gun over to Shane, he gets stabbed by Rick. Would Shane have shot him there? Who knows? But he was becoming extremely unstable as the season progressed, and I don't think there was any more words that could have mended their relationship. So moral of the story, don't mess with widows, unless you're 100% sure their husband's dead. <laughs> <laughs>